Hello friends and welcome back to this channel. In today's video, you are going to learn about the most interesting features of the new ChatGPT 4 model. I think what's super interesting, first of all, is that it accepts as input a combination of text, audio, images and video and it generates also text, audio and images as well as an output. That's not all. There are more interesting features that you need to know as a designer and I would say we will dive right in. So first of all, the new model feels very, very natural to interact. You can use that, for example, if you want to prepare for an interview. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI? Huh? It sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? And I think this is so fascinating, the way the new model loves, makes jokes, and do these very human-like pauses. I'm also Team Doc. I, uh, my name is Christine, and uh, I think Doc is just incredible. And I think what's interesting here is ChatGPT is part of this meeting as basically a fifth person who is able to summarize the whole meeting at the end, give feedback, and also kind of like guide the conversation if needed. You can also use the model for just playing games like rock, paper, scissors, for example. Uh, we're trying to figure out what should we play. Do you have any suggestions? Absolutely. How about a classic game of rock, paper, scissors? It's quick, fun, and, and that sounds great. Any... Can you count us in and sound like a sportscaster? And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the ultimate showdown of the century. In this corner, we have the dynamic duo, Alex and Miana, ready to throw down. Okay, just count us in. <laughs> All right, here we go. In three, two, one, shoot. Now show your hands. What did you pick? Who won? Would you look at that? It's a tie. Well, okay, let's do it again. Close. Or in this one where the model is basically sarcastic or reacts to sarcasm. Are you there? Hey, yeah, I'm here. What's up? Hey, let's do let's have some fun. Uh, I'd like you to be super sarcastic. Everything you say from now on is just gonna be dripping in sarcasm. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds just amazing. Being sarcastic all the time isn't exhausting or anything. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> nope, the sarcasm. Let's get this party started. And I think another super interesting use case is learning different languages, like in this example here. Hey, my friend and I are learning Spanish, and we're wondering if you could tell us the names of these objects in Spanish. Hola, por supuesto. Cool. What about, what are these objects in Spanish? The objects you're showing are una manzana and un pantano in Spanish. Nice for choice. Cool. What about these? I want to introduce you to somebody. Oh, hello there, cutie. What's your name, little slough ball? This is Bowser. Well, hello, Bowser. Aren't you just the most adorable little thing? Yeah. Look at you enjoy. This, this sounds basically like talking to a human, right? Like the way she reacts and responds to the video, I think is super fascinating. But there are some other interesting capabilities. For example, creating basically amazing storyboards. So if you have an input like first person view of a robot typewriting the following journal entries and then yo, um, so like, I can see now, cough sunrise, etc. The text is large, legible and clear. The robot hand types on the typewriter. Then you get this image. No spelling, no typos. So typography works so much better with this model. Then in the next input, you just basically say, um, now I want the page taller. So zoom in and it uses the same image that we created before now we are unhappy with the writing so we are going to rip the sheets of paper and here's the first person view of he rips it from the bottle with his hands and i think what's so interesting is that it always refers to the first image that we created and then really goes from there so you can create very consistent characters <laughs> It's also possible to create 3D objects with the new module. If you input, for example, a realistic looking 3D rendering of the OpenAI logo with OpenAI shown below, then you enter the view zero. 
you create another input, realistic looking 3D with the view 5. And then you construct this, a 3D construction from six generated images. So you basically need to generate the images from different perspectives. And then uh, the new model is is able to combine everything, works with all kinds of things, with all kinds of sculptures. And I think this is pretty interesting because this already shows where things are headed. Easy 3D content generation for basically anything that you can think of. 3D printing, 3D worlds, metaverse, spatial design, Apple Vision Pro content, you name it. Another interesting example of the new capabilities are the consistent characters. So if you want to design a comic, a storyboard, a book, anything, you need consistent character designs. And this has been so much easier now. So you create your character, for example, a cartoon male delivery person with a smile on her face. She's standing facing forward in front of a white background. You have your image. In the next one, you say, this is Sally, a male delivery person. Sally is standing facing the camera with a smile on her face. Then you attach the image that you created. And then we say, now Sally is delivering a letter, standing in front of a red door, for example. And you can place this character in many different scenarios, which makes it super easy to create consistent characters for any kind of content. Creating storyboard, just thinking about... Uh, for us as designers, that would be an amazing use case. Or any kind of visuals, any kind of mock-ups, right? I think another super helpful feature which comes with the video integration or with the video as an input is summarizing lectures, videos, any kind of content. So if you have this video, for example, this is an OpenAI keynote, 45 minutes, and you just ask for a detailed summary of the presentation. This is what you get, basically, of this 45-minute presentation. Also super helpful for meetings, for any kind of content. It also could be an audio, right? Like a podcast, for example. And I think what makes this so interesting is that, of course, there are other tools who are already doing that. But now you could do basically everything inside ChatGPT. Another interesting feature is if you have a text, for example, like a poem written in clear, ex um, excited hand, handwriting in a diary, here's the poem, and then it creates this image of you that really looks like a photo of a handwritten poem. So this really highlights how good it became with text and with typography. It used to be a super big pit pitfall in the previous versions and still with Midjourney. Another thing that I find fascinating is other improvements to data analysis in ChatGPT. There are three things that are especially interesting. Now you can f add files directly to ChatGPT from Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive and connect them with ChatGPT. I think one thing that we learned using large language models for the last one and a half years now is that the content you put in is so important for a great output and there's a lot of room for improvement if you add just like basic text what's super easy for a large language model is to analyze data in a table so tables will become much more important to have this background knowledge that you need basically to prime this chat with information so of course i think this is interesting as data is such an important thing what also is super interesting is the way how you will be able to interact with these tables. You enter a table through Google Mail, for example, and then you basically talk to the table. You say, rearrange it. Now the data shows the most spending. So if you enter a table, you will be able to interact with the table in real time. Basically like using ChatGPT at the moment, right? Like for example, ask for rearranging the table, create tables, create a graph, a pie chart, whatever you want. And you will also be able to customize the chart, for example, generating a graph by different by different parts of the, of, of the data that you uploaded. And I think this is a good example because it's a super complex one, um, retention of different user cohort analysis, and then it creates this graph. And it's not just a static graph, but you can filter, you can personalize the graph and do certain changes. What are your thoughts on all these updates? I'm super excited to hear it. Feel free to share your thoughts and your ideas in the comments. Would love to read them. 
And if you would like to stay updated with all the news, I have a free UX Future of UX newsletter that you can sign up. You can also find the description in the show notes. Now feel free to explore with the new model and let me know what you think.